In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Alteria's Beat Step to control the cue links in the MPC software. Check it out. What's up everybody? My name is Matthew, helping you create music, and on this channel, I do setup videos, tutorials, and reviews just like this one. If you're new here, consider subscribing. You can see here I have MIDI Control Center open. Now this is the software that you use to kind of set up your beat step. All right, so if you look here, you know, that's the device I'm using, the beat step. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna make sure everything's good. Now, obviously I have my USB cable connected to my computer, that way everything works properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and push sync just to make sure we're good, right? All right, so this is the working memory here. So what I wanna show you is this right here. Now, what you can do is you can see that there are 16 encoders right here, right? And then you have the one encoder right there. All right, so basically all 16 of these encoders can get assigned to one of the 16 Q links inside of the MPC software. And you can use this transpose button right here to go ahead and change, you know, the different menus, whatever cue links you want. Say you want your, the pad scene, or you want the, you know, whatever's on the screen, whatever cue link, you know, settings that you want, you can change it with this right here. So let me show you how to do this. It's really straightforward, right? I wanna show you the basics of how to do this, and then you could customize it however you want. So I wanna show you this, right? So you can see right here, I'm on number one, this red right here, means I'm on number one. So if you go here, we're on control. This is all the default settings, right? Absolute. But I wanna change this to relative one. Boom. And you can see all of this disappeared. That was limiting from zero to 127. Basically right now, this makes it where I have access to way more than 127 steps inside of the software, which is really cool. And then you just go ahead and you do this with each individual one takes a little bit of time, but it's definitely worth it, okay? And then once you set it up, all you gotta do is save it, you know what I mean? Go to relative one on each one, you know what I mean? And if you had, you know, different CC numbers, you could change that here, right? But I'm just gonna keep everything default, make it easy, all right, easy to understand. So I change each one of these encoders to relative one. So you also wanna change your transpose encoder, right? So go ahead, you know, make sure you got it clicked on and put it to relative one as well. So now all 17 of these encoders are set to relative one. And what you wanna do is you, you can save this, right? You can store it. So I basically already have it stored right here, MPC software. All right, so now this is in the working memory because I have it synced right there. So that automatically, you know, configuration sent to the device, automatically sends that con configuration to the beat step. And so at this point, you have to close the program to get the software to recognize it. So I'm going to go ahead and close the software, open my MPC software. All right, so once you load the software, you wanna go here, you wanna go edit, and you wanna go to preferences. Once you get to preferences, you wanna click on MIDI, and then you wanna make sure your beat step is an active input that's essential here. And then I usually have something going out of my beat step. So I put, you know, outport B right there. That's pretty much it. What you want to do for this particular instance, if you just want to use the cue link, right? Now, obviously if you want to sync it up, you could sync it there too, but that's for different applications. So once you have your MIDI set up there, you just click okay, right? Everything should be groovy. All right. So now once that's done, you can see up here, right? You want to click this, there's a little tab right there, or you can push Control Shift L. But basically that brings up the MIDI Learn window here. Now if you look up here, it's kind of funky, right? You have factory Arturius, you know, settings, but it doesn't have the beat step for whatever reason. But anyway, let's not cry about it. Let's just make it work, right? So, you know, you can save your user settings. See, I already have it saved there, but I want to show you how to do it. So. Basically, it's a new MIDI map. Make sure you got a new MIDI map, you know what I mean? So everything's clear. So once that is done, you click this right here. It says learn. Click learn. You can see right here in the software all these different parameters highlight. So basically, uh, once that's done, you go here, 
right? And you go down to Q-Links. And once you get to the Q-Links, you're good to go. You can set these bad boys up. Now, um, obviously the Q-Links, for whatever reason, Akai starts at number one down here. Uh, you know, and that's how their pads are set up to, you know, one, two, three, four, all the way to 16. So that's just the facts. You just gotta kind of work with it, right? Now, if you look at the, the beat step, right? One is way up here, but on the software, like one would be like down here. You know what I mean? So you can set this up where one's here. You know, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way to 16. That might be easier for you, but I'm just gonna set it up kind of this way. Where one's here, so I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 that way. So it's, so, you know, I kind of imagine this like this. So that's how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna click right here, all right? And you can see that this kind of highlighted right where it says time correct. So I got that highlighted. All right, so after this is highlighted, you basically just turn your Q-Link knob. So boom, right there, you can see 10. 10 comes up, right? And then you click the next one, boom. And then the next one, and the next one. And you can see the numbers come up here and they also come up over here, right there. Now, I'm gonna give you more instructions on this in a minute, but go ahead and just go through each encoder. Oops. Each and every encoder, right? Now, this could be confusing if you've never done, dealt with MIDI before, because you know, you got the numbers of the encoders, and you have the numbers of the Q links, and then you have the number of the actual CC number. But basically, you just click it, you know, click the parameter you want and then turn the knob and it's assigned, right? So now all 16 Q-Links are assigned, but I also want to go up here where it says Q-Link mode, right? I want to click right there. And then I'm going to turn this transpose knob. And you can see right here, boom. So now you're going to be able to change your Q-Link mode as well. All right, so it might look like everything's programmed and it is assigned, all of the numbers are assigned, but now you have to kind of change the type then this kind of um, kind of changes the way the knobs operate. And this is essential, this is key, right? This prevents stepping and this enables you to change the screens and then you know go from one set of Q links to the next step and be able to pick up where you left off. All right, so let me show you this. Where it says type, right there, it says RELCC offset. So that's kind of like your relative one. Remember how we changed it to relative one earlier? So let's go ahead and click that. Boom. Now you wanna do this for every value, all the way through 16, right? Now, I will tell you this, once you get to 16, you're good, right? Except once you get to 16, you also, let me show you. Now, th now this is tedious. But once you have it set up, you can save the settings, right? And now once you get to your Q-Link mode, you wanna change that one to relative offset too. Boom, so now they're all changed, right? So now what I can do is click out of learn mode. Everything's learned, we're good to go, right? And you can rename this mapping. You just double click in there and then you know you type it, type whatever you want, like, you know, Q-Links, whatever. So now that's saved in there, you know what I'm saying? If I go here, you know, boom, Q links. So now everything's set up. Let me show you what I mean, right? Now I'm gonna get really specific with this. Let me show you how, how this actually works. So if you look here, if I wanna change the Q link value, right? You can see I'm on screen. All I would have to do is turn this knob, boom, I'm in projects, I'm in program, I'm in pad scene. You know what I'm saying? Pad parameter. You know what I'm saying? I have access to all that right there and I can change it back. If I want to go back, you know what I mean? Boom, 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 screen, back where I started. Very simple, very effective. This is great. This works out really well. All right, so now check this out. Now, if we were in absolute mode or whatever, uh, we basically have one or zero through 127, right? Zero through 127 CC values, but the Q-Links operate on the relative mode as well. 
from what I can conclude because let me try to find something that has like a lot of values um, maybe yeah maybe this one right there where it says uh, sequence length well yeah actually tempo has a lot of value so now watch when I turn tempo right I'm already at 127 and now I'm changing the Q link the actual Q link knob but it keeps going right boom 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 so obviously there's way more than a hundred and you know 28 values or you know 0 through 127 so that was me turning to Q-Link mode now I'm going to click in here so you can see what I'm talking about right here right sequence tempo so now I'm going to turn that same knob or that same Q-Link right but with the Arteria beat step right here now check it you can see how it's going by ones in the software all right so obviously I'm accessing way more now if I spin it faster it's going to jump right because that's just how I have the settings set you can change the settings in the uh, the MIDI you know the Arteria's MIDI control center you can change the settings to slow fast or whatever so if I go um, you know I can go one by one right to 56 you know what I mean 257 258 or I could jump values right so I'm at 279, 285, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's very cool that way. Works just fine. And what's cool about this is there's really no way that I'm aware of. Like if you come over to your mixer, right? Uh, you know, you can see I have audio tracks. I have my programs. I have my sub mixes, all this. Now, check it out. When you click learn, you can't really like learn you know these values there's no nothing highlighted you can see all this highlighted over here and here but there's nothing here right but with this particular setup right you can still control it right because um, you can't really see it if you put your cue links to screen which is on it was already on screen right that lines up with whatever you're mixing so I can select what parameters I want to move inside of the the touch interface here like if I want to change audio tracks all you do is click audio tracks and then I can change the audio tracks so if I turn the number one knob you can see how it changes that value and then this the values of this actually absolutely match the values of the Q-Link knobs so now so let's say I wanted to change the sub mixes right now you can see all eight of the sub mixes here so all I have to do is pick sub mixes on the you know the MPC and then dun, 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 I can change the sub mixes right you know I could go slow fast and like I say uh, the resolution on this matches the Q links like exactly matches it So yeah, I can control each submix. If I wanted to do programs, I can select programs. I can change my program value. You can see right there, the program's changing. You know what I mean? So effectively, you have control over your mixer with the Q links. Very, very cool. Okay, so uh, you know, I hope that this makes sense. If you have any questions, just go ahead and you know let me know in the comments. If you set everything up how I showed you, it will work or it should work. I don't see why it wouldn't work. You know, as long as you've got your MIDI cable connected here into your computer, you should be fine. You know, and I have this in controller mode. Now, if I put this in sequence mode, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to do anything, right? If I take it out of sequence mode, now I have control of the, you know, the parameters. Hope that makes sense. Cool. Okay, so I hope that this video was helpful for you. So you can access all the parameters of the Q-Links that you need to. I was just giving you an example of, you know, the levels that you can access with the Q-Links. All right, and then like I was saying, you can select the, uh, you know, what Q-Link settings that you're in with the transpose knob, or you can go into your controller, you know, click the Q-Link button and select which Q-Link channel that you're on, whether you're on project, programs, pad scene, pad parameter, or the screen. You know, you can do it right there as well. You know what I'm saying? The NPC software is capable, you have options. It's all about figuring out what works for you. And this video is actually part of a video series that I'm doing, so I'll go ahead, I'll put a playlist 
in a card. So you can go ahead and check that out. Basically, the playlist is going to be all about MPC and what kind of uh, controllers that you can use for the MPC to kind of make it more capable for you as the MPC user. All right, if you like the video, go ahead, smash the like button, share it with your friends and family. Question of the day, are you using any MIDI controllers with your MPC software? Leave it in the comments below. My name is Matthew, continue to create, and I'll see you in the next video.